If you're a parent, it's your worst nightmare. Finding out your child has been molested evokes the most primal feelings of anger and betrayal. But what should you do in that harrowing situation? For most parents, the answer is simple. Call the police. Let justice take its course. For Jehovah's Witness parents, however, it isn't always that simple. They are part of a religious community that relies heavily on bodies of elders to internally police accusations of wrongdoing. In turn, witness elders are guided by the Watchtower Society to apply the so-called two-witness rule to all allegations. There must be two or three eyewitnesses, not just people repeating hearsay. No action can be taken if there is only one witness. If the accused continues to deny the accusation of the single witness and the wrongdoing is not established, the elders will leave matters in Jehovah's hands. This means that there must be two witnesses, either to the same incident or two similar incidents, for action to be taken. But when it comes to sexual abuse, there are seldom additional witnesses to the crime. And by the time a second child is molested, thus providing the needed second witness, it is already too late. Stephanie Hammond's personal story about this strange policy reveals how harmful this policy is for thousands of children. At 14 years of age, she was molested by one of Jehovah's Witnesses. 15 years later, Stephanie received a phone call from the man. How did he find her? When Stephanie found out that her mother had given the man her phone number, she was very upset and decided to call her mother immediately. Stephanie, calm down. I saw him at the last district convention and he approached me. He told me how sorry he was for what he did to you all those years ago. He apologized to her? She wasn't even there. And when I told her about what he did to me, she essentially did nothing. She told the elders in the congregation and reported back that we should just leave it in Jehovah's hands. He would correct it. The man I saw before me that day was broken. He was plagued with guilt over what he had done. I felt moved to embrace him and tell him that I forgive him. And I think you should too. You what? You hugged him? You saw he was broken? What about your daughter? I was broken 15 years ago when he molested me and you did nothing. I went to the elders, Stephanie. It was your word against his. And you know, just as well as I do, without two witnesses. Who cares about the elders? Why didn't you go to the police? <sighs> Look, Stephanie, we did it Jehovah's way. The elders handled it. Your child is a precious and priceless gift. Young ones rely on responsible adults to protect them from those who would do them harm including sexual predators. Instead, the leaders of the Watchtower Society, in effect, protect pedophiles with their policies related to child sexual abuse, thereby enabling them and putting other children in harm's way. If the Watchtower Society and Jehovah's Witnesses really care for the welfare and security of children, here are some legitimate expectations they should comply with. Inform members of the congregation that an accused pedophile is in their midst. Take great care to ensure that children are not accessible to accused abusers, whether it be in the door-to-door -door ministry or traveling to and from meetings. Immediately report any molestation to authorities, regardless of whether or not it is legal obligation in the state or country. Keep abusers out of reach of position of trust and authority within the congregation permanently. What can you do on a personal level? When Jehovah's Witnesses come to your door, explain to them that you are aware of Watchtower policies that protect pedophiles. Share this information with your family, friends, and neighbors. Visit www.aawa.co to find out how you can protect children from other abuses committed under the protection of so-called religious beliefs and practices.